Hello and welcome to the July 2016 newsletter. What a month it's been. I've been traveling, speaking and performing all over Europe and right now in my home country in Germany taking a walk through the forest and those of you that know me know that I always preach take time off connect with nature. And this is one of the few countries you can really do it. Every little village has a forest where you can go for a cycle or go for a walk, even mums and children. It's really awesome. And today I want to share with you a few deep insights that I've come across in the last few days. My first quote for you is, with real friends, time is never an issue. You always carry on from where you left off last. And that's so true. And with my traveling, I mean, I wish I could get around the world every year to all the countries I have friends in, but that's impossible. Sometimes there's an occasion that you don't see someone for five or six years. And I found that now, touring various cities here in Germany, that I've caught up with friends I really haven't seen in ages. And it is so phenomenal sitting with them and literally carrying on from where we left off the last time. And you cannot do that with everyone. So my message to you here is select your friends carefully. And if you do find there are those that you cannot connect with, it's really not worth wasting your time. Rather hang out with those that will always be there for you and you know you've almost got a soul connection because then life is such fun. And I found sitting with uh, uh, one particular friend of mine, we actually said, hey, why don't we do a business deal together? Simply because the trust is there and has been built up over a period of years, even though we haven't seen each other for such a long time. But there's that connection. And we tend to forget that sometimes it's not about the quantity of the visits, it's about the quality. So my first tip today, and experiencing it here in the forest and thinking about life, is really focus on the quality of your friendships. Then time and distance doesn't play a role. And here's your second insight. As long as uh, the masses remain quiet, the minority will be in control. Now have a look at this video. I started this on the 24th of June when the Brexit vote was just about to launch. I was standing there uh, next to the Thames in London. It was a quarter to nine in the morning and I was going to share a quick tip where I said, well, we've all got to stick together and make things happen. Of course, I thought Britain was going to remain in the EU and then they exited. So the message I shared, I couldn't use anymore. And I had to rethink what I was going to say. And literally, this is the truth. If you, as a culture, as a nation, as a family, as a group, keep quiet, the minority will always be able to control the outcome. And I look at all the hype in the media, the talk shows, what they're discussing. And it was interesting because after the decision was made and the vote was taken and the outcome was reached, only then did people start actually researching what does EU stand for, what does Brexit stand for. They had their own preconceived ideas or they didn't even know, but they just voted on something they didn't know. If you want to get somewhere in life, if you want to make a change, if you want to do something, number one, you have to be informed. And number two, you need to stick together because if you don't, then the minority will always be in control. And it doesn't matter how much you moan about it, that's a fact. So as I'm walking around and soaking in the nature around me, I suddenly get this thought, and it's a combination of experiences I've had for the last few days. And that is, if you desire materialism and become jealous of what others have, you are allowing others to control your happiness. <laughs> I'm sure I've covered this topic many times before. And what do I mean by this? Well, I look at the world as it is at the moment, and I see how everyone is trying to outdo everybody else. And I also notice how the one is jealous of the other one and saying, oh, but you were lucky you have this, you got this opportunity. And all they do is bitch and moan about what everyone else has, and they don't look after their own lives. Are you looking after your own life? Are you using your time productively? Are you, instead of wasting it, concerned about what's going on and trying to be as good or if not better than the Joneses? Are you actually using that time to control your own life and improve your own life? Because as long as we don't do that, we remain slaves to this conditioned world that we live in, that I keep on talking about. 
So I'd like you to think about your life and what you want in life and realize that your happiness is not dependent on whether you have more than your neighbor or not. There are millions of people on this world and we get caught up watching bloody stupid reality TV shows which are not based on reality but based on some obnoxious personality with a vulgar amount of money living a life that not even 0.001% of the world can have and yet you think that's what happiness is all about. Happiness is being able to walk around in a fantastic place like this, get in touch with nature, be healthy, have those that you love around you, whether you're young or old, and just be able to be in the moment. Once you can understand that, then being jealous of others no longer plays a role. Think about that. I'd like to share a quote of mine with you, which I actually wrote for myself. Then I thought about it and I think, well, there must be other people like me because I don't think I'm that different. And it goes like this. We all make mistakes. So stop judging yourself so harshly. It's all about the life growth process. Think about that. I, I can just look at my own life. When things go wrong, I make decisions that in four years' time have an effect. I go, why did I do that? I want to kick myself. I get aggressive. I get so annoyed. And guess what? My wife gets annoyed with me too. But you know what? Everything in life happens for a reason. We make these decisions and they seem to be right at that very moment. Yet later on, even sometimes it's, these are things out of our control. Whether it's a political situation that we could never have foreseen. Whether it's a world event, a natural disaster. We cannot always blame ourselves. But we do. And personally for me, that's one of the toughest things I have to come to terms with in life. Now, I might have a profile of being successful and all over the world, and I travel and I live my life. Yes, I do. But there are also many decisions I've made in my life which I'm not happy with. And I've got to learn to get over them. I've got to learn that everything in life happens the way it should. It's easier said than done. I know it's tough. But you know what I find helps? Is when I walk around places like this. When I tune in with nature and when I just chill and relax and realize, but hang on, there is more to life than the rat race and running around. What's that great saying? Who said it? I don't even know. Even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat, yeah? But when you come out into nature like this and you just sit down and you look at trees that are hundreds of years old that have experienced and gone through more than any of us have ever done or ever will be able to do, that have been around through wars, through peace, you suddenly realize, what am I getting upset about? I'm such a small part of the evolution of time. And when you actually can just come to terms with who you are and where you fit in, and just realize that everything I do, I've got to enjoy the moment. Because even if four years down the line, I find that a decision wasn't the right one, as long as I take the decision that I take, with the idea of living life to the fullest and enjoying the decision in that moment. How can I keep on blaming myself? And maybe that's why you have certain cultures where the elders are always respected, where they have an elder council, because it's only through life and making mistakes that hopefully we build some wisdom and then can advise the younger generation out there. So I trust you get something from that insight. How is your life at the moment? Are you happy? Are you content? Or are you frustrated? If you're anything like me, a type A personality, you're forever on the go and you're forever trying to do something. And in fact, finding the time to take a walk through a forest or enjoy nature becomes a pretty tough thing to do. And sometimes we've got to actually sit back and consider the important decisions we have to take in life. Many times we don't want to do that. And I'm at one of those stages in my life. And I've heard that saying, you know, you've got to take two steps backwards to get four steps forwards. Yes, but sometimes that's not good enough. Sometimes you have to take 10 steps backwards in order to move two forwards. A whole 10 backwards in order to move two forwards. Why? Because by doing that, you allow yourself to refocus and ultimately find happiness. In other words, you actually have to take a whole lot more steps backwards than you are going to get ahead 
in the short term. Because by doing that, you are actually allowing yourself to reframe your thinking to a more positive outlook. You see, it's easier to say take two steps backwards or four steps forwards. There's not as much risk involved. But the older you get, you'll find that different things have different meanings. And contentment and inner peace and happiness start becoming more important than materialistic things. And if you base your happiness on, well, if I give this up, I'm actually going to have a lesser standard of life. Well, according to who? And is it according to materialistic values or is it according to happiness and health values? These are all things we've got to take into consideration. So for me, rather take 10 steps back so that ultimately you can move two steps forwards and then be in a position that you can clear all of this. Because once this is clear, once you have focus, then you can move forwards Damn, a hundred steps. It might just take longer. But isn't that really what life is all about? To enjoy the journey as well? So, those were my ideas and insights for the July 2016 newsletter. I trust you've got something to take home there and to ponder about. And remember, I've got tons of one-minute quick quotes and gags and tricks that appear on my YouTube channel, Inspiring the World. Do come and join me, have some fun. They're not all as long as this, and they're not all as serious as this. I wish you a fantastic July, and I'll chat with you again in August. From me, Wolfgang, cheers.